CPU Galaxy. Welcome to the CPU Galaxy channel. Yeah, after my last video I got some requests to make a tutorial of how to open a ceramic CPU. And this is what I want to share with you today. For this video I choose an Intel 4086DX33 CPU and an old ADC in a standard ceramic dual inline package. Yeah, why does someone wants to open a CPU? Well, just for being curious what's inside and getting a closer look to the brain of your computer. Some of you might also have a microscope to have a closer look on the structures. For this you can also check my previous video too. In this video now I'm going to show you two possibilities of opening a chip to expose the silicon dye. With the 4086 I'm going to make also a test if the CPU is afterwards in still working condition. So stay tuned and be curious together with me. Most of the ceramic chips do have a metal lid underneath or on the top which is covering and protecting the silicon dye. You can see here nicely the silver layer in between the lid and the ceramic substrate. This is nothing more than common solder thin, as you are using it for soldering on a PCB. Mostly a mixture of 40% lead and 60% tin. The melting temperature for this material is around 200 centigrade, so the only thing we have to do is heating up the chip to above 200 degrees, removing the lid and taking care that we don't damage the silicon die or the bond wires to keep the CPU functional. For the CPU I'm going to use a common hot air gun, which you can buy in any do-it-yourself store. It's important to take care of heating up the CPU slowly, otherwise you might crack the ceramic of too much stress in the material. You could also use a small gas torch, but the temperature of the flame is much higher compared to the heat gun and you might also destroy the dye of too high temperatures. But if you don't care about the functionality, you can also go with the gas torch solution, it's much faster. I'm always using a heat resistant material on my table and something to fix the CPU nicely. When you reach the target temperature, you cannot touch the CPU of course anymore and you need to act quickly before the solder thin get hard again. So I use an old heat sink and with some screws I hold the CPU on its place. So you can uh, see it's not rocket science, just simple equipment which everybody will have available at home. Let's start to heat up. So, what already happened, I did not take care enough. Look at that. Look at this nice die. So here we have it. After some patience and heating up the whole chip here, we exposed here nicely the silicon die. Wow, looks so nice. I can even see with my eye here the 8 kilobyte of first level cache. So until uh, we can touch it, we have to cool it down a little bit and yeah, so let's wait a little bit. Yeah, everything cooled down already and now we can check our silicon dye and here we have it very very nice and shining. You can clearly see these nice structures. So uh, I'm really curious if this CPU is still in working condition. I will check quickly with the uh, magnification glass the bond wires. Yeah, here we can see the bond wires. They are not bent or damaged, so I'm, I'm pretty sure the CPU is still working. But this we are going to check later in the video. The only thing which got for sure affected is the, the color and the printing uh, on the top of the CPU. So this white printing usually gets somehow uh, brownish due to the heat. Yeah, then let's open now our ADC chip here, uh, same as the 4086. Here we have on the top this uh, 
gold lid which is soldered to the, cer to the ceramic substrate. Yeah, in this case now I will show you um, the removal of the lid with the gas torch. So as I mentioned already, the flame is much hotter uh, than the heat air gun. So uh, you have to take care that you don't burn the whole chip. Especially you, when you remove the lid, um, you must remove the, the flame, otherwise you will burn fully the bond wires and the die underneath. So let's start. Yeah, moving around a little bit the flame to heat up the whole chip equally. Yeah, soon it should melt already a little bit around with my tool. I can try to move a little bit the lid. Yeah, it's already melting but not fully yet. Yeah, let's try. It should go away soon. Yeah, you, you, you could see already now, so I didn't take care enough. Um, the bond wires were glowing up fully, so I destroyed the bond wires. Um, yeah, unfortunately, uh, yeah. So the gas torch heats up everything much quicker. Small chips won't crack, but um, you have always the risk burning the bond wires and the die with your flame, yeah? Yeah, also this is cooled down now nicely, um, yeah, we have now a nice view to the silicon die also, but unfortunately we burned the whole bond wires on this side, so and this goes very quickly with the flame, as you could see, yeah, very sad, we damaged it, and it's not so nice as it should be. So from my point of view, the gas torch solution uh, is a quick solution, but it's very risky that you destroy something. So I would always go for the solution with a heat gun. Yeah, the final moment is here to test our CPU. I prepared already the setup here. The ASUS PVI4086 SP3 as usual for my 4086 setups with a reference CPU that I can be sure that the whole system here is running proper. Believe me or not, I didn't put this CPU in this socket yet, so I'm very curious if it's really going to post or not. Yeah, then let's remove our reference CPU. Actually, it's the same model, a 4086 DX33 MHz, and here the opened one. So let's put it inside and switch it on. So let's see what is going to happen. Does it post or not? We have a post screen, yes. Great. Yeah. So this CPU is definitely working. It's posting proper. 33 megahertz showing, so everything quite fine so far. Let's see if it's also starting the Doom demo. But I was I was not 100 percent sure that it's working, but yeah, now we proved here you can heat up nicely a CPU to remove the lid, exposing the die, and it's still in working condition. Nice, very nice. And here again, let's switch it off to prove that this is not faked. Our nice baby. So we have an open 4086, which is still functional. Yeah, now you saw two possibilities, 
how to open a ceramic CPU. I'm pretty sure that you guys have also other ideas and flows to heat up a CPU to open it. If so, please write a comment below and share with us your experience. That was it for today. I hope you liked the video and if so, please subscribe that you won't miss any further content. Enjoy now some pictures of chips I opened and have a nice day.